Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn for Singing News and I am here with singer-songwriter Mark Bishop. How are you, Mark? Hey Jamie, I'm doing fantastic, all things considered. Yeah, how is quarantine going? Well, um, I just got my first haircut from my wife a little while ago. I was starting to look like a, a Dairy Queen swirly cone. I just kept swirling it up on top. <laughs> so I'm checking it out. I'm checking it out right now to see if she did okay. I think she did pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. Doesn't look like she did a bad job at all. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for a compliment, but thanks anyway. You're welcome. I don't give out compliments if I don't mean them. So she did a good job. <laughs> and I'm a daughter of a barber, so it's it oh, oh, well, then you should yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. So I hear that you are as big of a Disney fan as I am. Oh, we love Disney. Uh, I grew up on watching the wonderful world of color mm -hmm. disney's wonderful world of color back in the 60s and 70s you probably remember that too i'm guessing do you i remember sunday night's wonderful world of disney <laughs> but mom and dad took us boys i'm the oldest of four boys and we went uh, to the magic kingdom that was the only park that was open back then this was back in the mid 70s i mm -hmm. guess and uh i've been just been a disney fan ever since of course it's it's changed now it's Back then, it seemed like it was much more a personal thing. You identified with the the values of Walt Disney, whereas now it's pretty much run by a corporation and everything. Right. But without getting on a soapbox, yes, I, I love the family values that Disney yeah. represents. What's your favorite ride? Oh, gosh. You know, I love Splash Mountain, mm -hmm. but I, I love the classics like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and... Uh, the Haunted Mansion. Actually, what I like about uh, the Disney uh, park experience are the stories that are told. It's it's different than just a, my phone's tilting here. It's getting away from me. Uh, it's different than just a, a roller coaster at, at some other park. You know, they always tell a story. So, yeah, which that shouldn't that shouldn't surprise anybody that listens to my songwriting. I love just a good story. Mm -hmm. So you're a columnist for us at Singing News for our magazine. Where does your inspiration come from? Usually the inspiration is Danny will send me an email or send me a text saying, Mark, I need your article now. <laughs> and uh, an hour later, <laughs> I'll send him a, I'm, I'm always jotting down notes, but uh, I do that anyway as a songwriter. And two, we started doing this thing with some of the humor bits that we've been sending out to radio stations with a new show that's called You're Happy When You're Laughing. And those are just a collection of stories. So I've just been collecting stories my entire life. So when someone says they need one for something, if it's Danny Jones at the Singing News or someplace else or the, the record company says it's time to record an album, right. I'll pull out those stories and adapt it to that format. So you have a new radio show. Where can the listeners hear it? Well, it looks like we're on about maybe 30 different stations right now. We just started a couple of weeks ago, and it's available for all of the radio stations that receive the Daywind radio show prep, okay. daily show prep, and it's, it's called Mark Bishop's You're Happy When You're Laughing, mm -hmm. and it's, they're, they're one-minute professionally produced segments where hopefully we'll make you smile and laugh uh, with the stories that we tell, and, and it's kind of hit and miss. They can go to... Uh, markbishopmusic.com and they can see a list of the stations and the syndicated shows and places that are airing it. Uh, they can also keep up with us on Facebook and, and we try to, to release a list of the stations that are playing it. So it's probably kind of hard to, to catch right now. It's a one minute segment. Uh, you'd have to listen all day to try to catch it, but the folks that have heard it seem to enjoy it. Good. I'd love to hear one of those stories. Do you mind sharing? Oh gosh, where would I, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. I think we did just, we just did one about, uh, uh, it's, that's called bad gumbo. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I used to sing with my dad and my brother in a gospel group. This was quite a few years back now. Yep. Yep. And we, tr we traveled around all across the country for about 17 years. I lived four days a week on a big blue bus mm -hmm. and we were singing down in Southern Louisiana one time in this church after the concert had fixed uh, some uh, gumbo, some authentic Cajun gumbo for us while we were down there. But the stuff was so thick with vinegar that we could hardly eat it. And they gave us a great big pot of it before we left. And we took that up on the bus and said goodbye. 
and we couldn't wait to get back to the interstate about 10 miles away so we could dump that gumbo out. <laughs> and uh, we got, we pulled up into the truck stop. We were dumping that gumbo in the garbage can and here came the preacher and his wife that pulled up in the car right next to us while we were dumping it out. Oh my goodness. Uh, and they, we were caught dead to rights. And I didn't know what to say. The guitar player standing next to me, he said, uh, we had gumbo last night. <laughs> We kept dumping it out, but I don't think we ever got invited back to that church. <laughs> I love that story. That's a good one. Um, as a songwriter, where do you, do you find your same inspira inspiration, sorry, in, in the stories around you? Absolutely. I think that songwriters, all of my songwriter friends have a different, different uh, method or different uh, application, a way that they approach it. Um, I think that songwriters have this little filter between their ear and their brain that just catches song ideas. Very seldom have I sat through an entire sermon. Usually I'm listening to a preacher and at some point they will say something that I think would be a good song idea. Mm -hmm. And then I, di I diverge off the course that the preacher keeps going this way. And, and now my mind has gone this way down a little rabbit trail mm -hmm. and i think songwriters do that inspiration comes from all walks of life all places all influences conversations with family i hear it in sermons i can hear it in another song on the radio right. uh, perhaps there'll be uh, one line in the middle of a verse and i think wow that's a that's a song idea idea in itself or reading the paper or looking at a magazine watching tv they just come from everywhere and i have little notes that are just stuck all over the place in the office and sometimes they'll hang there for months and uh, and then one day it'll strike me, okay, I know what this song is now. As a matter of fact, I did a song a, a few years back called uh, I'm Listening for the Call. I'm not looking for the signs, but I'm listening for the call. And that ended up becoming a number one song. But it was just on a little bitty notepad uh, hanging on my bulletin board up here for three or four months. A friend of mine had called me up, uh, Chris Champion down in Alabama, and he said, man, I heard a preacher say something, and it's a great line. And I hung it up on my bulletin board and didn't know what to do with it for three or four months and then one day i was down on my uh, in the basement on the treadmill walking and that treadmill hit a pretty good little rhythm and i started uh, singing when i was a little boy i heard about the last days and the whole song came to me in about 10 minutes on the treadmill wow so sometimes you just have to let you have to let a, a song idea ferment and, and hmm. gestate a little bit did that treadmill get credit for royalties? Uh, it, the treadmill doesn't care, but I think my friend down in Alabama would like for me to send him a royalty check. <laughs> so being someone who has grown up doing Southern gospel most of his life, how do you see the genre changing in the next 10 years or where it might be in the next decade? Well, it will probably change as much in the next 10 years as it has in the last 10 years, in the last 20 years. And music is a thing that's just always in motion. Creative people will always want to put their stamp on whatever craft that they're working on. You know, so the, the furniture that was made 100 years ago is not the furniture that's, that's made. It, it meets a different aesthetic today. Uh, it meets what people want. And music will always evolve and change. Uh, I can tell you this, that as long as God has his people here on earth, there will be Christians that will want to sing about him. Mm -hmm. Whatever form that music may be in, uh, it, won't, it won't really matter. We're, we're going to find a way to sing about him. And different, different parts of our country even have different cultures, right. and they will, lack, they will lack their cultural stamp on that music. That's why even within our genre of Southern gospel music, we have some that is much more Appalachian and bluegrass and country, and then some that's a little bit more urban and, right. and a, a little bit more polished uh, appeal. Everybody likes different things. If everybody liked the same music, then there would just be one group out there singing for all of us. Right. But we all like different things, and we all like different things at different points in our lives, too. Mm -hmm. So that was a very convoluted, long answer to your question. But in, in 10 years, if, if Christians are still here, there will still be Christians singing gospel music. Well, I like that answer. I don't think it was long and convoluted at all. <laughs> Thanks. So you put out a new album last fall, Beautiful Day. It's a great mm -hmm. album, by the way. Um, any chance yes. something new coming on the horizon, or we're going to let that one go for a little bit longer? 
Well, it seems like we've kind of got into this pattern of, of every 14 or to 16 months or so of recording an album. And I'm fine with that because prior to that, we were trying to release an album every year. And I did that for many years. And I felt like there were so many good songs that didn't get a, a proper airing mm -hmm. uh, that people didn't get to hear. You, you, you scarcely got into the new songs and the new album when you moved on to a next batch. And that, that kind of made the albums feel like they had the shelf life of an editorial cartoon in the newspaper. You know, you enjoyed it for that moment and now it's gone and it's time to move on to something else. But the best songs have a longer shelf life than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably have a song in your heart that's, that's 10 or 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And even though great new music comes to you all the time, God presents new music to you in your life all the time by the talent of the people that he invests in, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there are still those songs that have some staying power. And uh, I, I believe that gospel music is, is a little bit different uh, than a lot of other music and that these songs can be a, a promise uh, kept to us mm -hmm. that we can take with us throughout our lives. I've, I've got old hymns that I grew up on that I still draw upon the, the wisdom and the strength and the encouragement, and the peace that they offer. Mm -hmm. Now, I love to ask every songwriter, what's the favorite lyric or song you've ever written? That's an impossible question to answer because <laughs> it changes. It just changes all of the time. We'll write I, I've, for you. I've, I've written a, a bunch, oh, and I hate to use that word, but I've, but I've written a bunch of stuff that in the moment, usually my excitement for a song happens long before anybody else gets to hear the song mm -hmm. because when I'm in the writing the creative process of writing that song that thought is just very uh, relevant and close to me at that time mm -hmm. and then it runs through that gauntlet of, of other people working on it and hearing it and uh, offering their opinions on it and by the time you get to the end and the album comes out then the song it's 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 probably close to what you had envisioned, but still it's, it's got the input of other people. But when it's very close and personal to me is when it means the most, mm -hmm. and then it gets uh, presentable to the public. But I think that gospel songs, just like I mentioned a while ago, gospel songs are a lot like uh, scriptures in our life too. Uh, how many times have you heard a, a preacher preach a sermon and uh, and he'll use a scripture and and you've heard that before uh but it was before when it was just wise and profound now suddenly it's very personal because your life circumstance has changed and so that scripture comes to life for you and i believe that's why we call uh, the bible the living word is because the the bible follows us throughout our lives and those scriptures come to life and they 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 begin to glow upon the pages when they become very relevant to mm -hmm. our situation Mm -hmm. Well, a gospel song can be the same way. What your favorite gospel song was uh, last year, your circumstances have changed. So now you might hear a message that's very relevant and personal to mm -hmm. you right now. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the songs that I've done that seem to have uh, that lasting power, songs like um, You Can't Ask Too Much of My God or Can I Pray For You or My Name Is Jesus seem to, seem to be songs that are going to have some staying power. And I enjoy those. Anybody that looks at my music is going to see that I love songs that tell a story. Yeah. Okay. So what is your favorite song that you wish you had have written? Oh my gosh. Now that, that one, that's another tough question, <laughs> but I, I hear, I hear a lot of songs. I'll be listening to the radio, listening to Southern gospel radio or listening to it streaming when I'm in here in the office and I'll hear songs. And I think, Oh, as a songwriter, I probably come at it as a, as from a different way. I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I, I wish that the Lord had given me that huh? <laughs> instead of giving it to, to my friend, right. Bill Cross or Rodney yeah. Griffin or Gerald yeah. Crabb or Squire Parsons. Yep. You know, I, I would take Beulah Land just because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a classic. That's because he lived, <laughs> Because he lived or he touched me, you know, that, would, yeah. that wouldn't be a, a bad one. But uh I enjoy, I did a little tour with some of my songwriting friends a few years back. There were four of us got together and we did a little Rat Pack like thing on stage yeah. where the four of us would sit on stools and we would tell the stories behind the, the songs. And uh, it was myself and Phil Cross and Gerald Crabb and Squire Parsons. 
and we would sing some of her songs and we'd tell the stories behind them and uh, had a choir behind us and it was just a lot of fun. But it amazed me as I listened to their songwriting process and how God gave them songs, uh, how different we all were because uh, Phil Cross, his songs are just so, so large and majestic mm -hmm. and epic. Mm -hmm. Thinking of uh, the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. Yeah. You can just see a chorus of angels singing that. And Gerald Crabb, he writes from this place where I, I was down at the bottom and God rescued me. He, he, he writes rescue songs. God lifted me up. And Squire Parsons, he's, he's just the straight down the line, just the here, here's, uh, here's the Southern gospel message. You know, he, he's the epitome of Southern gospel. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at my songs and I tend to write so small. I love small, intimate moments and, and stories about a long time ago, two twin brothers always fought but loved each other. Or I've got a song called Perfectly Honest about there was a lady who lived in our town. She lived alone above the grocery store. I write small, he writes big, he writes from desperation, he writes from God's steadfastness. So God uses all of these different songwriting gifts. Uh, and I just appreciate all of the songs that my friends are writing. Some of them I couldn't write because I haven't been there. Yeah, yeah. As we finish up this interview, is there- and Aren't I doing great as a politician because you answer a question and then I, I dismiss that question and just go off on a tangent for- <laughs> You want to run for president? I don't mean to make that happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Oh, no, no. You're doing great. You're doing great. I would love to know if you had a message of hope for the viewers today. Well, absolutely. If, if ever there was a time when we needed encouraging, it's right now because there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of misinformation. Uh, folks are having to stay at home and live in their own minds a little bit and sometimes you know the easiest thing for us to do is just to stay distracted and to uh, be engaged in a noisy world that thinks for us and we don't have to think for ourselves mm -hmm. but uh, maybe god sees this as an opportunity for some of us to get back to our our inner core beliefs and thoughts and and listen to the quietness of what he has for us mm -hmm. and not listen to the world so much it's it's kind of funny because um, I love getting outside and working and, and uh, during this hiatus, since I'm not out trailing, I've been doing a lot of yard work outside. We've got some land to clear off and I've been out cutting out trees and, and, and cleaning some uh, areas off. And uh, when I get away from the 24 hour news cycle and away from the noise, I get out in God's creation and I'm listening to the birds and I'm watching the, the squirrels and the, the foxes and all the animals outside. It seems to me like the world is just going along just exactly how God planned for it to go along. It's not until I get in and get engaged on the, the, the news. And I, I can be a little bit of a news junkie if I'm not careful. I'll, I'll stay tuned to all of that, that we, we get in a different place. So just like I was able to get outside and get away from the news and find that quiet place, we need to also do that with God and do it more frequently than when a pandemic sweeps the nation. If we can get in those quiet places and listen to what God has for us and get centered and, and, and re rearrange our priorities into what's truly important. Mm -hmm. um, but God has all kinds of encouragement for us. And I would just tell folks that uh, God was not taken by surprise by the, these recent events. God knew this was going to happen all along. And God has a plan that we're going to make it through it also. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking time today to talk to us at Singing Muse. And I, sure. I can't wait to hear the radio show and I can't wait to read the next column. Oh, God bless your heart. Well, I enjoy writing it. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Bye-bye.